Hey, this is Steve with RV to Cycle. Ever feel like the wine cellar in your RV is too small? Well, we've got that problem right now, and if you want to see how we fixed it, stay tuned. So the first thing we have to do is we have to take the frame and the lid out of the wine cellar. To do that, we're going to have to remove these four screws that are above this lip, and then there are four more screws underneath the lip. We'll take those out, then we'll come to this side, and there are four screws similarly placed that are under the lip on the side furthest from the driver's compartment. No screws on either side, which is good because that's where we're going to make our modifications. Okay, so we're taking out the screws, all four of them. We're not going to bore you with the process of taking out the eight on that side and the four over here. But just to show you we actually did it, we're getting after it. Okay, something that's important to note is that the screws on the top side, closest to the driver's compartment, are self-tapping screws. And the ones over here are just regular old traditional wood screws. So when you're putting it back together, remember that the self-tapping screws oh, go along the top edge. And then all the eight, which go four and four are wood screws. And a tip for when you are removing the hinge off of the wine cellar, make sure you have an extra pair of hands because it has a weight on the lock. And when you're taking out your self-tapping screws, which that hinge will either fall all the way back and bend your hinge, or it may fall all the way forward and injure you and bend your hinge. Another important fact is that although this frame looks like it's one continuous piece, it's not. There is a gap back here in the part that's closest to the drivers. So when you take out the frame, you want to start at the part of the frame that is furthest from the driver compartment, which is what we'll do right now. So it pulls out quite like Whoa. that. And that's what you get in the end. Yeah, they've glued that or taped it one or the other. So once the frame's out, what we're going to do is we'll turn it over and we're going to remove some of this metal that's on the side. And we'll do that using a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. For those of you who are very curious, this entire frame is made from aluminum. So it should cut pretty easy. Now, once we start cutting, we do not want to cut through this lip because once you cut into that lip, you're removing the support for the lid. This didn't work out as well as I had hoped. The idea was sound. However, I should have taken some measurements before we began to disassemble the wine cellar door and frame. Why? Well, once I got the frame out and started making some measurements how much we could cut off, I found out I wasn't going to be able to remove enough of the frame to make a hill of beans. For those of you who don't know Texas expressions, that means to make a difference. We're back where we were with the wine cellar. I did take the opportunity to move some things around, so I get a little bit more storage by doing that. I found that this driver's side portion of the compartment is much longer than the passenger side of the compartment. So I got the smaller height items, shoved them back in there, and that's made a world of difference already. So, can't show you what it looks like with everything else in it. If I did, I'd have to kill you. No, I can't show you because <laughs> the other things are in use right now. There's a the chocks for the wheels. That's it for today. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, give us a thumbs up. And if you really didn't like it, well, give us one of those. Thanks for watching. See you soon. <music>